Hello friends, welcome back to lesson number two. Um, in this lesson, we would basically be looking at the first few, you know, steps and uh, screens, you know, just to make you familiar with how Xcode, etc. would look like. Uh, once you've downloaded Xcode, most probably it would be on your hard drive under the developer tool, um, unless, you've, uh, unless you've created aliases and put them in the applications folder. So what I've done is I basically moved them into the applications folder, which is why when I open the applications folder and I click on uh, developer, I see all uh, all the uh, you know all the uh, applications that I would be requiring to make the iPhone and iPad applications in my applications folder. So basically, let's uh, you would see that uh, the most important one would be Xcode, um, which would look like this. I'm going to close this for now. So let's have a look again. Um, the Xcode would look like this. It, since we've downloaded the uh, free version, it's not the Xcode 4 which you get when you pay $99 a year. Um, since this is the free version, you would see that it does not have um, you know all the features of the Xcode 4. However, um, you would notice that there's uh, you know create a new project button. So when you click, you start basically creating a new project. Then there's getting started with Xcode. It has uh, you know tutorials, guides, etc. to help you get started. And then there's this uh, Apple Developer Connection, which we're going to talk about later. So let's close this for now. Uh, we'll come back to it again. Let's have a look at uh, other tools. Um, the other one is uh, Dash Code, which would look like this. Um, I'm not going to confuse you now with uh, you know what to do with the Dash Code, etc. We're going to close this as well. Um, and then we've got um, interface builder, which is an important tool because uh, it helps you build, you know, the, how your app would look and how people would interact with your application on their iPhones or iPads. Um, so this is how it would look. We're going to come back to this as well in in a later stage at a later stage. For now, we would focus more on uh, Xcode. Now, um, when you open Xcode, it would basically give you the option of creating a new Xcode project. So we will click on the Xcode project and it comes up with a window like this. Um, we have several choices here. Uh, please remember, we, we are not. this is not a tutorial for Mac OS development, application development, so we're going to ignore this part and only focus on the top bit, which is application library. Um, and sometimes we may use other, but not now. So initially we would only focus on the top bit, for which is for iOS, um, which basically relates to iPad and iPhone and iPod Touch uh, applications. Now, under the Applications uh, tab, you would see there are several small icons you know, for different type of templates. Now, as you can see, it says choose a template for your new project. Um, Apple by itself provides a lot of templates, uh, you know, to help new start, you know, starting developers uh, to, you know, find it easy to start developing applications. Um, so what they do is they basically put in some templates so that you can get started and then build your application uh, and improvise gradually as you move ahead. Um, the first new, the first one you would see is navigation based application you would have a small description about each of these at the bottom um, so if I read that through to you this template provides a starting point for an application that uses a navigation controller it provides a user interface configured with a navigation controller to display a list of items now um, some of you may find this description suitable the others may not understand anything from the description uh, so what I would do is I'll try and explain these uh, templates one by one to you. The navigation-based application um, is, is is a very simple one to understand. Um, maybe I can take the example of your contact book um, on your iPhone or maybe on your iPad. Uh, what happens is uh, when you click on the uh, on the contacts, you would see a list of all your contacts, um, you know, one after the other. And when you click on any of your contacts, it takes you to a much deeper level of information so it tells you more about you know their phone number address um, email id etc etc 
that's navigation based. You basically have a list and on the list, on the top of the list, you have a back button or a forward button. Um, you know, you can go back, you can go forward, uh, you can click on the uh, item and go into a you know second level of information. So the easiest example is the contract or the address book on your phone. Open GLES applications. Now, if you read the description, it says uh, starting point of an application that uses Open GLES based view. It provides a view too much into your into which you render your Open GLES, GLES scene and a timer to allow you to animate the view. Now, this kind of application is not a very user friendly application to start with in uh, you know initially. But once we've developed a couple of applications, we're going to come back to OpenGLES uh, applications. Um, I will explain about GLES uh, later on because I don't want to confuse you at this point of time and don't want you to think that, you know, it's a rocket science to build, uh, build an iPhone or iPad application. The split view based application is majorly for the iPad. Um, and like the name says, you know, you would have split views of an application within one sort of application you would have different choices uh, which are you know kind of framed into different uh, split frames or split windows um, as you read on the description it says uh, it is ideal for an application that uses a split view controller it provides a user interface configured with a split view controller and two view controllers to manage a master detail style display um, more relevantly you know maybe a sort of shopping application you know may be relevant to this one wherein you know you can have split views um, say for example if if there's an application that tells you details about cars then the split view controller can have um, you know views based on the performance the mileage the technology the safety etc etc on and when people click on each of these frames they can see details uh, related to related to uh, you know the the particular tab they select now tab bar application um, this is this is very common you know if if you've used a iPhone you would see at the bottom they have four or five icons which are very uh, common you know mostly the most common uh, applications that they use at the bottom and the list of other applications on the screen this is something similar to that um, when you click any of the uh, icons or the features at the bottom um, the display on the top of the iPhone or the iPad will change accordingly. Um, most of these, most of the applications come with, you know, a, a sort of tab at the bottom which allows you to select properties or you know features or levels or menus within that application. Utility application is uh, again, you know, w it's best not to not to touch this initially, but we're going to come back to it. It's not a rocket science. Uh, we're going to come back to it, but again, utility-based application is uh, basically for you know using um, you know the GPS or other kind of utilities like the weather, um, you know maybe the weather application or the world clock that uses different locations, um, etc. View-based application is is the most common one where you know anything that you see on your screen you can touch and go into a deeper level of information. Um, and as the description uh, says, it's an uh, application that's ideal for a single view. It provides view controller to manage the view and a nib file that contains the view. Now, I'll tell you in the next tutorials what's a nib file, but as of now, you know, let's uh, let's just assume of this as a kind of storyboard, where you know you see the story on a picture sort of uh, display, and when you click on the, you know, once you've read, once you've seen the picture, you click on the next one. Uh, maybe you know the best example is the photo gallery where you know you have the view and then you just slide it to the next picture so that's you know that's probably a relevant example to a view based application window based application is again um, it is also one of the most popular and the most uh, I would say the easiest uh, you know application to build uh, initially all applications actually have windows, uh, you know, window, they're, they're mostly window based because whatever you do pops up a window, um, you know, which is displayed either on the top of the screen or probably cover the full screen, etc. So um, according to me, I, th I think about 80% of the apps uh, are mostly, you know, win window based apps. 
unless you know there are some sort of uh, specific apps that do not want to use window based application at all so this is it um, about the applications in the library you would see that there's a Cocoa Touch uh, static library which which has a lot of uh, other application uh, you know codes and templates built into it but then we're gonna come come back to it one at a time as of now um, I just wanted to show you how the interface looks like and what these small icons were um, so what we would do is uh, we would in the next lesson go ahead and learn how to do our first window based application thanks for watching the video and if you like the videos if you like the tutorials uh, please encourage me by subscribing to the channel thank you very much